For over a decade, exhibitors at the Keeneland Concours have enjoyed a taste of some of the very best that Kentucky has to offer during the event. But of course, they're here for the competition, the chance to have their cars judged against some of the most stylish and elegantly appointed cars in the nation. I had a chance to meet with Kurt Richards, the head judge of the Keeneland Concours d'Elegance, to find out what makes a winning car stand out from the rest and why these automobiles are judged to a higher standard. How you doing, Kurt? Doing good, Dave. Glad to be here. Well, I know you guys were uh, very, very busy on the day of the show, so we grabbed him after the fact to tell us what goes into judging these vehicles. Well, you know, we use a 600-point judging system. Um, we use three guys. Um, of, of the three, we have a, a team leader, mm -hmm. um, we have a timekeeper, and the, just the third member of the team. Um, we give 20 minutes for every car so that everybody on the show field has the same, um, has the same attention, has the same time. We deduct points. Um, you know, for imperfections in, in, in paint and in finish. Well, this is a Packard, what year? Uh, this is a 1932 uh, Packard 900 shovel nose. Oh, okay. Uh, to me, it's immaculate. I, I don't know what I would find wrong with it, but you have a different eye. Yeah, well, you know, that, and, that's, and that's the beauty of the 600 point system and the three different eyes that look at that, because you and my, and myself won't look at this car in the same way. And so um, that's where the fairness level comes into play. Um, you know, we can, we can take a look at, at, at this car just, just to kind of go over some of the things that we do. The paint, speaking of that, uh, this, this, that that's not original. No, uh, this, is, this car is not original. It was, this is an older restoration. So, but restoration is okay if it, if it ties back into the original uh, specifications of this vehicle, right? Exactly, exactly. One of the challenges is to identify whether or not that was a painted surface or a polished surface. That's where your uh, tremendous amount of research you do comes in. Exactly, <laughs> the, the guys that, that are out on the show field have spent hours and hours researching these cars. Uh, looking at these, this vehicle from here, do mm -hmm. you see anything? Well, some of the things that, that, that stand that stand out, I mean, and these, this is obvious. Um, you know, some of the, the, the top, the, has, the material has, has just discolored from, from being probably stored a lot with the, with the top down. Um, so, you know, we would look at this, we would step back and look at this, and this, this would be a deduction. Okay. There would be deduction for that. If you look at this, this line right through here, it's, it's nice and sharp up here, mm -hmm. and it's a little wide down here. Um, uh, yeah, I can see that. You can tell. We've taken the top down so we can see the interior a little bit better. Um, and there's a lot to see in here. Yeah, and, and some of the things we do when we're in the car, um, obviously we turn on the ignition to, and we start these cars. Um, checking the functions of the gauges, make sure everything is operational in, uh, in here um, with you know, the, the temperature, the, the gas gauge. If we find something that doesn't work, um, the owner has, or the person presenting the car has, has the opportunity to fix it. We give them um, the next 20 minutes that we judge the, the car that precedes that one um, to correct it. If they correct it in that period of time, then, uh, you know, no deduction. Um, we've had cars that, that wouldn't start. Um, and, you know, our, our criteria is, you know, if you win that class, you have to drive the car across the podium. Congratulations. Well, I have learned a lot, I'll tell you that. I appreciate the tour of this beautiful Packard and telling us how you do some judging. Well, it's been my pleasure. It's been my pleasure. Getting all the automobiles organized is no small task. We spoke with Jim Levinson, the former director of automobile acquisition about the detail that goes into developing the show classes. We have specific classes that each car needs to fall into. It may be a, a certain decade or it may be an open class or closed class, which would be a convertible or a, a coupe or a sedan. So your car has to fall into uh, a class that we're having that year and again, 
We select between 18 and 23 classes with each eight cars per class each year. And uh, everything from the very beginning of automotive history to the most current supercars that are out there today. Well, it's very important to us to have a, a very diverse uh, group of cars, not only in the type of cars and people, but also from where the cars come from. We've had cars from just about every state in the Union and from Canada. What we look for is as the manufacturer intended. We look for strictly stock cars that uh, have been maintained or restored throughout their life. You have uh, eight cars in a class to represent a period of say pre-war maybe and you're going from something that may be in the very early 1900s or the late 1800s and taking them up to say 1940. Sometimes you don't always get a uh, spread that you need so it takes some balancing and, and uh, uh, some moving cars around in classes. We try to do the best as far, even, even down to the color of cars in a class. We don't want three red cars in a class. We want every car to represent the earliest part of a era to the last part of the middle and in, in a various, various colors, various manufacturers and, and types of cars. So when a spectator comes up, they have a pretty good feel of what a pre-war classic would look like as an example. 